My name is Dr. Ephraim Zinberg. I am the Chief of Orthopedic Hand Surgery here at Henry Ford Medical Center. I treat pretty much everything from the fingertips up to the elbow. Uh, I treat fractures up to and including the wrist, the distal radius. Well, first I'd like to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to get some of your thoughts on camera and talk to us about why you use Dynasplunt. Uh, well, I treat uh, quite a few distal radius fractures. They're common year round. And uh, that's been my main indication for the use of a Dynasplunt. We fortunately have access to very high quality hand therapy mm -hmm. here at Henry Ford. And uh, when patients have gone through a, say a four week period of hand therapy, we usually treat the fractures for approximately six weeks and then start motion. And they go through hand therapy uh, with standard techniques for about four weeks. And at that point, we assess the patient's progress. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we have a good idea as to where they're headed. If they are having difficulty regaining their rotation, supination, pronation, or their wrist motion, extension or flexion, that's when we bring in the dinus once. Is there a window of regaining the range of motion? There is. Okay, and what is that window? Well, it's short. I tell patients the time to start therapy is right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, as soon as we say it's safe, which is really at six weeks, mm -hmm. outside limit. I have had patients come to me from places where they did not get a reduction, needed surgery after that, everything is delayed. I've had others who have had decent care in terms of uh, either splinting mm -hmm. or surgery, but were never sent for therapy. Mm -hmm. And they come in and they are stiff as a board. And sometimes it is four, five, six months later. Mm -hmm. The good news is that even at that point, uh, we've had some very good success with the help of these splints. Mm -hmm. I've had patients uh, who were not treated necessarily by somebody who specializes in what I do. And they have had zero therapy, they have almost no supination. Some of them are stuck at zero degrees. And I tell them there's only one thing that's going to help you at this point. Standard therapy will not work. And that's this, that's a dinosaur. And what would you say is a functional range of motion for um, a distal radius fracture in the wrist motion for extension or flexion? Uh, our goal is to get at least 50 degrees of extension and 50 degrees of flexion. And what about supination pronation as far as range? Well, ideally we, we like 90. In order to hold on to small objects, the main complaints patients have when they cannot supinate adequately is they cannot hold on to small objects like coins. Correct. They drop out of their hands. So, Ideally, you need 90 degrees of supination with the palms flat. If a patient, say, has extreme difficulty with regaining, say, supination plus minus pronation and wrist flexion and wrist extension, at 10, 11 weeks, they really need all three. Uh, once they are instructed properly in the use of these splints, they're basically doing it three times a day at home on their own, occasionally seeing the therapist or you for some adjustments or some guidance uh, or measuring to see their progress. Mm -hmm. They'll come in periodically to see me as well. But um, yes, ideally, if they are indeed lacking motion in all three or four parameters, they need all three. And yes, it does save costs. In fact, nowadays, most patients have very high copays with therapy and they are reluctant to come in as a result. So it's actually the new system of high co-pays for every single visit is, uh, is interfering also with progress and patients just don't want to come as often for therapy. So uh, anything a patient can do at home is an ideal, an ideal thing and a benefit to them uh, in terms of their function, their recovery, and, their, uh, and cost saving as well.